Hi, and welcome to another episode of the Assembly Lines Podcast. I'm your host, Chris Torrance. And today, our goal is to restore this very sad looking Apple IIc to its former glory. So let's get started. So here's the Apple IIc that we're trying to restore, and this is a model A2S 4100, uh, which is one of the later Apple IIc models. And you can see it actually boots up fine, but it's clearly got some key issues. And there's a couple keys that the actual key stem is completely missing. Uh, some of them, for example, the four key, it's broken off, uh, and you can see that the key doesn't actually work. Uh, these other ones, they work, uh, so we're going to have to do some repairs here on some of the keys. Uh, the delete key works, but the stem is broken off, and the closed Apple key uh, is missing entirely. Luckily, we actually have all of the actual key caps, uh, so we're not missing any of those. So let's go ahead and we'll pop the cover off and take apart the keyboard. So let's remove the case for the Apple IIc. And to do that, the first thing we do is remove the six screws. So you can see there's two screws here, two here, and then two near the front. You don't need to remove these four screws here. These actually hold on the disk drive. Now that we have the six screws out, we can release the catch. And the catch is in the front of the machine, but it's not in the center. It's off center a little bit, and it actually lines up with the speaker underneath. And to release it, I'm just gonna use a plastic scraper and I'm just going to insert it in here carefully and just sort of slide it along and if you do that it should just pop right off. Then to release the rest of it you can just kind of lift it up carefully and kind of tap on the sides. The trickiest part is actually at the back of the machine uh, to release the catch back here because you want to do this without breaking this, it's actually, this is all one piece here that's attached to the top. The seam is not here, it's down here. So just kind of carefully work it up and slowly work it away. And if you just wiggle it, it should just pop right off like that. So let's go ahead and we'll take out the keyboard now. And that just lifts straight up and away. There is a pin connector here which just pulls straight out so here's the keyboard and it's pretty simple it's just a series of key switches which are connected to the encoder board back here uh, the board itself looks like it's in good shape we just need to actually fix the key switches themselves all right now the interesting thing about these keyboards is this is the later model uh, 4100 so it has the clicky keys and these key switches were all made by Alps and the earlier model the 4000 had key switches that look like this so you can see they're actually white in color um, and they don't click so even within the Alps key switches you have to be a little bit careful for example here we have three different varieties so we've got the white one that we looked at earlier no click the yellow gold one click and here's kind of an orange colored one and no click on that. For the Apple IIc model 4100 you want this kind of gold colored clicky ones but even those sometimes you'll see them where they don't actually have the click. So to clean the keyboard I'm gonna go ahead and pop off all the keys and I tried using a key puller like this that I got from Stephen Buggy on eBay uh, but it didn't really fit over the keys properly and this reminds me of the chip pullers that actually cause more damage uh, than they solve. So instead I'm just using a pair of tweezers and what I'm doing is putting it underneath the key itself and then just putting my thumb here and like this and then just prying straight up. And that seems to work the best and just kind of pulls them out while still applying equal force on the key itself. So if you have a pair of bent tweezers like this, 
uh, or bent nose pliers, that's probably your best bet. For the space bar, you have to be a little bit more careful. The key switch is off to the left. So the best bet is to just pry off right where the key switch is, and then you can just slip off the uh, retaining bar here from the, the keyboard itself. There's a little post over here uh, that just keeps it in place, uh, but it's not actually locked down. And you can see there's two types of key switches. There's the regular clicking ones, and then there's the locking ones. So for example, here's the caps lock key. So let's get the keyboard all cleaned up, and then we'll go and we'll solder in the missing key switches. So to clean the keyboard, I'm just gonna use a toothbrush and some Fantastic. And we'll just spray it down and rinse it all off. And then I'll probably spray it with some uh, isopropyl alcohol afterward just to remove any traces of the Fantastic. And that'll go ahead and the alcohol will dry rapidly. All right, so for key switch number three here, uh, I've got one pin that's still in there, so I need to remove that. So I'm just going to attach the forceps here to the pin and just let it dangle over the edge. And then hopefully, as I heat up the board, then the weight of the forceps will just make it fall right out, which is actually number three. And we're just going to heat that up, and then it just fell right out. Uh, looks like we'll just go ahead and use the solder sucker here to... Uh, Remove some of that debris. All right, so we need to put in the good key switch. And to do that, we just line up the pins, hopefully, nicely. Okay, there's one. Okay, there's another one. And then... The last one is the open or closed Apple key. Alright, so those are all in. So the delete key uh, works. And even though it's got this little nub and a plastic here, I'm actually going to leave that in because I only have one delete key. I don't have a replacement. So I'm just going to have to super glue it into place. So we'll just leave that one alone. And now let's go ahead and solder our three key switches. So they're at positions four, five, and then over here at position 58, I believe. Let's go ahead and we'll plug it in and try it out. All right, so I got everything plugged in and I'm just using the Night Owl monitor here. Uh, just for convenience, so let's turn it on. Okay, that's good. And we will hit control reset. Okay, looks like I have a stuck key. Uh, let's see what's going on here. All right, so it turned out that the isopropyl alcohol hadn't completely dried yet. And to clean it all out and make sure it was dry, I used some contact cleaner. And once I had sprayed that in all the key switches, then it worked a lot better. There were still a few key switches that didn't work properly. And so in my next video, I'll take a detour and show you how to take apart the key switches and fix them. So I'll see you next time.